This is a Sports Catastrophe production. Hey there, Heather, ho there, it's Jeff Cutter Diamond welcoming you to another Sports Catastrophe birthday boy. And as usual, I try my best to do a birthday boy that actually um, is alive, but I couldn't find anyone that I haven't done for April the 6th. So I'm practically going with this guy. Um, he was a star catcher in the 1930s baseball. He played for both the Philly A's and the Detroit Tigers. And one of the best catchers in baseball history and is part of the Hall of Fame. He was a good manager and all that. But this guy was a good catcher. His name was Mickey Cochran. And, you know, he's done pretty well for himself. So Mickey Cochran was born in Bridgewater, Massachusetts, April 6, 1903. His father immigrated from Northern Ireland and his mother immigrated from Scotland towards Prince Edward Island. He was known as Black Mike because of his fiery competitive nature. Cochran went to Boston University playing many sports including football and basketball. And it looked like he was going to be maybe a basketball star and all that. Cochran thought he was a better football player than baseball player. But with pro football not really being established as of yet, he joined baseball and signed with the Portland Beavers of the Pacific Coast League in 1924. After one year in the minors, he went up to the Philadelphia A's system in 1925 at the age of 22. And he was a pretty good catcher. He took the place of one of the best catchers around Cy Perkins, but he really needed to be good for that to happen. Anyway, he was a left-handed bat that looked pretty good, and Mac would actually have him occasionally make him lead off. And anyway, his role was to get on base so that Al Simmons and Jimmy Fox could drive him in. By his rookie season, he was a, he batted three thirty one helping the A's take second in the American League. And then he was still a very high commodity as catcher. He was so much smart by, by 1928 that he was the American League MVP because of his leadership and defensive skills. He could hit with the best of them, but he would basically be a good catcher. Oh, all that. Cochran basically was the catcher for the A's once they won three straight pennants in 29, 30, and 31. He was pretty good in all that. He won the 29 and 30 World Series. Unfortunately, the 1931 World Series, they lost to the Cardinals, and people pinned that loss on him because, because of all the deals that the Cardinals did and all that. A lot of people believe that. Uh, Charlie Beavis, an author, actually said that the Philadelphia pitching staff's carelessness in holding runners was a contributing factor, but it basically was blamed upon Mickey Cochran, despite the fact Cochran was a good player. Unfortunately, the Philly A's needed some money and all that, and financially they couldn't do anything. I mean, it was during the Great Depression, but regardless, the A's put Cochran on the trade block. Detroit was willing to pick him up and all that. Their owner also was suffering from financial troubles, and the Tigers had not been higher than third since 1923, and was just basically being content with mediocrity, and attendance had sagged. There were rumors that Babe Ruth was going to be player manager of the Tigers, but when they couldn't get at him, the Tigers figured Cochran would do it all that. And Cochran was then given the title of player manager and all that. He was a team leader and he had a good competitive nature. The Tigers won the 1934 AL Championship, their first pennant in 25 years, and won 101 games which was pretty impressive. And Cochran became the first manager to get 100 wins as a rookie. Cochran would platoon G. Walker to spell left 
outfielder, Goose Gosselin, and center fielder, Jojo White. So Walker would play left or center sometimes. Cogbird's strategic skills won him the 1934 MVP award. Unfortunately, the problem was, despite him winning the MVP award, Lou Gehrig did hit the triple crown, leading the league in batting average home runs and RBIs, but still couldn't do it. Anyway, he looked impressive and all that for the Tigers. They did, I believe, lose the World Series to the St. Louis Cardinals. Anyway, despite all that, he helped Detroit get to the 1935 World Series and a title win against the Cubs. So he got the championship and all that. All that. Cochran was soon on the fast track to becoming a Tigers legend. Unfortunately, though, on May 25, 1937, Cochran was hit on the head by a pitch from Bub Hadley. Cochran looked good, but then, like hitting wise, but that hurt him. He was hospitalized for seven days and nearly died from the injury. And then that's when people wanted. Batters to have protective helmets, but it, that didn't come for four more years. Cochran would retire at the age of 34, being told that he couldn't really play baseball again. Cochran, in his 13 year playing career, had a 320 batting average with 119 home runs and 830 RBIs, with over 1,600 hits. His 320 career average is still the highest mark by a catcher to this day. Not even Pedro Rodriguez or Mike Piazza have broken it. His on base percentage is the highest among catchers. And then in 1932, he was the first catcher to score 100 runs and produce 100 and get 100 RBIs in the same season. In his first 11 seasons, he never caught less than 110 games. He was just a good defensive catcher. Cochran would go back to the dugout for the Tigers. I mean, he was still a manager all that. But his competitive fire had been burnt, mostly by that hit by pitch, if you will. He did win 348 games as a Tigers manager. But in the end, you know, it was just hard pressed and all that. But yeah. He won a World Series and took second in another one. Cochran served in the U.S. Navy during World War II despite his head injury. He was a lieutenant and coached the baseball team. In 1947, he was inducted to the Hall of Fame. And anyway... The Tigers actually honored Mickey Cochran by renaming National Avenue, which was the street beyond the third base stands of Old Tiger Stadium, Cochran Avenue. The Tigers would not retire Cochran's number three. It was, reti it was retired for Alan Trammell. Regardless of that, Cochran was GM of the A's in the 1950s. And in 1962, well, he was a heavy smoker and died of lymphatic cancer in Illinois. Cochran was huge and all that for the Philadelphia A's and, and also the catching prospects of the 1930s that catchers weren't just light-hitting defensive-minded players. Cochran proved that he could hit quite well and all that. And besides, Mickey Cochran was so popular that Mickey Mantle's father named his son after Cochran. So another Mickey came in the league, Mickey Mantle. Oh, Mickey is a fine, that's a fine, you blow my mind. And it blew everyone's minds in the 1930s. Anyway, I'm Jeff Diamond to do.